So one of the, the pitfalls in this kind of work is to be stopped by confusion, to just give up because you th I don't get it, I don't know what you're talking about. So that is a normal space to move through as you engage in this kind of thinking. And when I first started working in systemic thinking and conscious full spectrum models, I would get confused, I would be left to my own mind going, what is she talking about? Who am I to take this on? And one of the things that really helps is to have a team of people around you engaged in the same kind of thinking. So we encourage people to come to our learning and action programs with two or three people that are engaged in the same projects so that they're not left to their own minds, as I like to call it. The other thing that really helps is to use our reading and watching list as resources because we have many examples of projects that have been designed from a conscious full spectrum model that have been successful, that have produced remarkable results around the world. And I'm gonna give Monica a chance to give us a couple of those examples, but we really have a plethora of resources for you on our website that you can use to really gain clarity. But how you gain the clarity is by being in action. That is the only way to really, really get what this is, is to take on a project and start working it through this. And you will start to get systemic thinking. You'll start to see the systems behind what's not working in the areas that are important to you. And you will start to take action in a whole different way. So let's take a problem. Maybe I take a problem like HIV AIDS in Eastern Europe. And as you know, HIV AIDS in Eastern Europe is transmitted primarily through intravenous drug use and people sharing the needles. So we began our work, and a very important thing in that work is to look at the problem and to be able to have people use clean needles. So you have a harm reduction program. So you have a harm reduction program, so you're trying to stop the transmission of HIV AIDS solving a problem. There was another problem, and the other problem was that, that when we looked at this, the traditional systems, that is society, even religion, often felt that these people were bad, and that they had stepped outside the boundaries of what was social, socially acceptable, and that they actually um, suffered the consequences of their actions. So what are the conversations we will have in society? I remember one day when we were having this work now in one of the countries in Eastern Europe, Ukraine, that during the break people came up and said, you know, you're wanting us to re-look re at what this is. What is it that has them do what they do? And so when we began our work, we said, we will not, we will assume that everybody has a source of deep power. And we went through the same process like Jocelyn just described, looking at your creation source, who am I as possibility, and everyone in that room, 300 people, standing in a space of their own power. We are gonna solve our problem, therefore, not as a project, by simply giving needles. We are gonna solve that through shifting the conversations in society, but also shifting the ways in which services were being provided. There was not any place for people who were dying of HIV to go to. And as a result, so they identified the shifts that were required. The three shifts that were required, one was transparency, the ability to speak up and say, I am positive and not be excluded. The second thing they identified was a space they required, services that they required, the system to share, to provide care for those who were dying. And the third thing was to shift the way in which society looked at them largely as sinners, and to be able to reframe that whole thing from a different space. So this was what they said, and at the end of it, it was so beautiful. I was invited. There were four of these people who were participants, who were from the discotheques. Uh, very proud to say that um, at the end of a year, all the drug use in these discotheques stopped. And so we didn't actually need the needles. And the next thing that happened is they ran a campaign called the Red Poppy Campaign. And they took photographs of a red poppy the white snow and these 
people got together and created, that campaign was to create space for those who were dying. And then there was this concert, and 20,000 people came for that concert, and I went to that. And it was the first time a young man stood up and declared that he was HIV positive, and he said, will you come and hug me? And so for me, this kind of work is about solving the problem, shifting that system, and sourcing it from deep within. Not like it just happens, but when we language it and design it, we can communicate it for other actions. I can give you a second example. And a second example would be the reduction of maternal death. So in South Asia has one of the highest death rates of mothers in the world. And some 40% of maternal deaths are in those six countries in the world. And 7% of women in South Asia die due to battery. Just want you to know that battery exists here. Some 25% of women in this country are abused, mostly in their extended families. So it's not an out there phenomenon. But you asked me for examples of what worked. And so we began by solving that problem of death. The next thing is by providing services. We also noticed that um, the hospital that, that DFID had set up was not being used, just 5% bed utilization rate. So the general tendency is to train, to provide supplies, to tell people to provide clinical services. Absolutely, yes, we must. But there were two issues, one in society and one in the system, or a set in society and a set in the system that didn't allow this to happen. So what was the value placed on a woman's life in order that she be the top priority when she's not well? And for a lot of us who work there, you know that's not the case. So we worked in the communities, again, through conversation, sourcing power, getting to know who we, who we are and what we can do. And it is wonderful to note that evaluations five years down the road showed that the bed utilization rate, which meant that communities brought their women to the hospital improved. It also showed that the functioning of the hospital improved. It showed that before we began, Almost all decisions on how to allocate money were just made by the head of the hospital. And through the work that we did in the hospital system, we found that suddenly the needs of the janitors, the needs of the, the entire staff were taken into account. Now, you think that that's easy, but um, in a, a society where there's a lot of hierarchy, uh, class hierarchy, past hierarchy, professional hierarchy. This is a huge thing. So practically, these people turned around creating a huge difference. But this 